Hey guys, Tori here from Overlook Horizon. I got an email the other day from somebody that said, uh, can you send me a picture of what's actually inside the box? And I was thinking, I don't know if I've ever actually shared what's inside the box to anybody. So I figured today we'd take a quick look and then you guys can actually see what's on the outside and the inside of our weather balloon payload boxes. Go for deploy. This is no ordinary balloon. Press to ATO. Space lobsters configured for flight. Hello, So before we look at the inside of the box, first we gotta look at the outside of the box. So the outside of the box isn't really anything special. It's just a regular styrofoam cooler that you can buy at Amazon or at Walmart or any place that really sells coolers. We picked this for two main reasons. One, it's really soft and cushiony so that when it lands, it's not gonna damage any people or property that happen to be on the ground at the landing sites. The second reason that we use this is that it's actually very well thermally insulated and the upper atmosphere can get pretty darn cold when we're up there. We wanna make sure that all the electronics on the inside are very well protected. On some of the flights that we've had, the temperature can get down to like negative 60 degrees Fahrenheit on the outside of the payload, but on the inside, it can still be a nice and toasty 40 or 50 or even 60 degrees or higher. Now, just about all our bigger flights have two main camera ports, one on each side of the payload. You'll see them sticking out here. They're embedded into the sidewall of the styrofoam cooler itself. That's another reason why we use these styrofoam coolers because they're really easy to cut into and you can shape and form them and add components to it with relative ease. Now you'll notice the hole for the camera is a little bit strange looking and that's because the outside is actually flared out away from the camera lens. The camera isn't embedded that far into the sidewall of the cooler and so we have to flare the outside edges away from the camera lens so that they don't encroach into the camera frame. Generally for these larger flights we have at least two cameras on board, one on each side. That gives us a little bit of redundancy in case something goes wrong with one of the cameras and it also gives us the opportunity to set two different camera settings. On some of our flights you'll actually see a camera up on top as well. That camera hole up on top it faces the balloon the entire time, and that's what gets us those really great images of the balloon burst. On some of the flights where we only feature two cameras, we'll actually use this alternative top here. All over the outside of the box, you're gonna notice a lot of these yellow labels. And those are really there for two purposes. First, it's gonna let somebody know what just fell out of the sky. This could be a pretty strange situation when you have a random box that just fell out of the sky onto your property. So these yellow labels let somebody know what's inside the box and that it's not gonna be harmful to them. Also, you guys can't see them because I put X's over it, but it's also got our phone numbers on there so that if somebody gets to the payload before we do, or if it gets lost, somebody knows how to get in touch with us and help us pick it up. On the two ends of the boxes, you're gonna find some components here. First is our micro payload. This is a secondary tracking system that we use to locate the balloon while it's in flight. It's really only there in case something happens with the primary flight computer and we have to rely on a backup system to locate the balloon. We call this our micro payload because this device can actually be used all on its own and fly just by itself without any box. Also on the side of the box is our landing alarm. This guy activates below 2,000 feet as the payload is coming in for a landing, and that serves for two purposes as well. One, it's gonna let somebody on the ground know that a strange box is falling out of the sky and maybe get out of the way. Also, it serves as a locator beacon for us so that we can find the payload after it lands. Sometimes, even if we have GPS coordinates, it can be tough to spot if it's up in a tall tree. Also on the side, you're gonna see our temperature sensors. Now, one thing to note for that temperature sensor, it's completely exposed, and it does provide pretty accurate results throughout the entire flight. However, because it's completely exposed, once it gets to the peak altitude, it can actually suffer from thermal radiation, which means that the temperature readings that it gets are actually higher than what the actual air temperature is outside the payload. On the other side of the box, we have our humidity sensor, which measures the relative humidity percentage, and also our startup alarm. The startup alarm is there to let us know what's happening with the flight computer. Since the flight computer doesn't have a visual display where you can actually see what's happening, we rely on audible signals as well as some LED lights to tell us what's happening and that all systems are operating the way they should. On top of the box, you'll find our quick mount harness that's prepared before flight day, and that way we can easily and quickly connect to the balloon and the parachute when we're ready to launch. So now let's take a look at the inside of the box. One of the first things you'll notice is that there's a couple of wires that stick out with it. And those are two different wires. One goes to the camera and one goes to the external GPS antenna on the outside. And as you can see here, the third camera is embedded in the top of the box here. And those cameras will only last for about 45 minutes with the battery that's internal to them. So we have to provide it with external battery power so that it will last for the entire three hour flight. On the inside of the payload, you're gonna notice a couple of things. There's four battery banks. One is for the main flight computer. The other three are for each camera. Our main primary flight computer is what sits right in the middle of the box there. And that's what we use for tracking the balloon during flights, 
recording all the data, managing the power to all the cameras, and performing all the sensor readings to collect our weather data. Over on the right hand side, you'll see a phone which we sometimes use as a third tracking method. If you're gonna use one of these phones to track your flights, there's a couple things you gotta be concerned about. One, by FCC regulations, you cannot use a phone during flights. So for us, we have a custom Android application that automatically turns it onto airplane mode when it launches, and then when it lands, it automatically shuts off airplane mode. Also, I don't recommend using these as a primary method of tracking. They're not very reliable, and they're not gonna work once you get above about uh, three or 4,000 feet. So the only thing that these things are good for is for landing recovery and a fail-safe method in case your other tracking systems completely fail for the flight. Back on the inside of the box, you'll see our two side cameras that are embedded into the sidewall of the styrofoam cooler. You'll also notice that these cameras are covered in copper foil tape. This copper foil creates a Faraday cage around the cameras to contain any electromagnetic interference that can be emitted from the cameras. We ran into a lot of trouble with the cameras interfering with the GPS signals, so we don't take any chances anymore, and we keep this copper foil wrapped all around the cameras just to keep it contained. Also, heading straight through the bottom of the payload is our radio antenna. Radio antenna is used to send us positioning signals throughout the entire flight so we know where it's located, what altitude it's at, as well as some other information like temperature, pressure, humidity, all that kind of stuff gets transmitted back to us via amateur radio signals. During the flight, it's going to stick out of the bottom of the payload like this, and that's how we know where it is and what's happening with the flight while it's still in the air. So that pretty much covers everything about our payload box. If I missed anything or there's other questions you have, leave them down in the comments below and I'll be sure to get to them. If you like this video, you like our flights, or you just generally like what we do, hit that thumbs up button. Also, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss any of these videos or our flights or live broadcasts. We've got a couple of those coming up. If you want to help support our flights, you can head over to the OverlookHorizon.com shop and get yourself one of these t-shirts. That's going to do it for me. We'll see you guys in the next video.